Okay, so in today's video, I want to talk about how to use grids, and we're going to actually recreate a part of the Webflow website that make use of grids. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Harrison and I run a digital agency based in the UK and this channel is all about Webflow, how to start a web design or development business or how to generate passive income online. Okay, so on today's video we're going to be focusing solely on Webflow and we're going to look at how to use grids. So grids can be used for all number of things and I've just selected one portion of the Webflow website and we're actually going to just recreate this so I can sort of demonstrate how grids actually work and the best way of using them. Now there's all sorts of things you could use grids for so I just brought up the Apple website as well. So this kind of thing when it is literally a grid <laughs> it's kind of obvious that this would be perhaps used as a grid. You don't necessarily have to use the grid feature within Webflow which is this part here. You could use Flexbox to achieve the same kind of thing but I do find myself more and more and more actually using grids for most things when it comes to columns and rows. Anything really where you have sort of again like an icon section or maybe where you have sort of text on one side and then uh, an image on the other side, which is obviously super common in all kind of web design. So what we're going to do first of all, is we're going to recreate this sort of a little section here, which actually is using a grid. Just to prove that, if we look under the hood on the Webflow website, yeah, you see here where it says grid item, which basically means they're using a grid as well. So let's do that, and we're going to do responsive as well. So if we go to our page, we're gonna just throw on a section, and we'll give it a minimum height of 100 VH, and we'll also make it a flex box and we'll pop everything into the center as well so we can see it better. And then what we'll do is very simply, we'll just throw on our grid. Now you can select grid element from the element section here. You can alternatively, you could throw on a div and then turn it into a grid by clicking this icon over here. But just for now, we're gonna actually just throw on this element and we're going to have three columns. So, but you can do that simply by just clicking on this button here. You can also add them or get rid of them over here as well. So this would have duplicated it so you can add more. If you want to get rid of them, just click on the bin icon. Uh, and in terms of the rows, uh, we only need one row. Uh, so I think it's a rows are this way, columns are going downwards. And we'll just get rid of one so that we have three and that's all fine. And we'll also just expand that outwards and we'll give it a maximum width of 1,100. Okay, so now we have our centered grid. What we're going to do is start recreating this sort of icon section here. Just for speed, I've actually already downloaded these images, but obviously you can do the same if you want to follow along with this. Uh, so first things first, within the grid, we're going to throw on a div block initially. And rather than doing that three times, what we're actually going to do, we're going to basically make one of them and then just copy and paste that along. And that just makes the whole workflow part much faster. Okay, so first things first, we need to get the sort of the triangle bit there. So first off, we're going to throw in an image and then we'll just choose the one that we have here. And that's all good. And then in the div block again, we're then going to throw in our heading and we'll make that, we'll make it an H3. And what was the first one? So the first one was speed. So we'll just type that in. So it's all the same. And then we also have some text as well. So in this case, we'll throw on, could be text block, but we'll do a paragraph and then we'll just quickly copy and paste actually this text on. Okay, and there we are. So super quick. All we have to do now is make sure the div is selected. Now, again, usually you should always be naming all the divs, but just for speed, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but with the div block selected, if you now do uh, Command and C or Control and C, if you're on, a, if you're on Windows, uh, and then Command V or Control V to paste that along two times. And then, as you can see, all you need to do is then just change the text or images inside the, uh, the div blocks themselves, and that's it. You're pretty much there. So let's do that now. So just click on the image, and I think next up was was this one, and then the last one was circles, and then we have scalability. Let's just type it in. And then the last one, what was it? Security. Okay. And there we are. We have our icon section by using a grid. Now, if we look at the original one, you can see there's a bit more of a gap here. So the really great thing about how Webflow have integrated CSS Grid is that it's all visual. So if you click on the grid itself, double click, you can then actually adjust how this looks without having to go over to the CSS panel and type in any spacing. So you can literally just drag this out and you'll see as I do that, 
on every single side it affects the spacing which is super super great and that's why using grid for this is super quick okay so that's all fine for desktop view so let's just scale this down now and for different screen sizes so you can see initially what we've got a problem here we didn't put any padding inside the section so we'll just we'll just do that first before anything else so on the section i'm going to just click on padding and we'll do something like three percent and we'll do that on either side okay so now if we can track the size of the page going down to tablet view it still looks okay but then around about mobile landscape it starts to get a little bit on the cramp side so at this point we probably just want to have it all on one column so that's what i think we're going to do and again because we've used grid if you stay on mobile landscape if you now click on grid you can now just get rid of two of these columns and it will automatically oops sorry it will automatically pop it on the underneath for you which is again super super useful and again if we want to adjust the sizing of this we can do it and as i do it you'll see it does it for both sides so it's completely even just saves you a lot of time so i think we had 50 pixels before so we'll have 50 again and there we go and again the beauty of this is that as we scroll down to just mobile portrait view you'll see we don't actually have to do anything we can keep it exactly how it is because we've kind of done the hard work already for mobile uh, landscape and there we are so that's pretty much exactly what the Webflow website do. Just to prove that, let's just do the same sort of thing. So we'll just start scrolling down and it's disappeared. <laughs> Where have you gone? Okay, here we are. So around about here, it's going to pop onto just one row and there we are. So you can see it looks pretty much exactly the same as what we've done. There's maybe a bit more spacing there, but you can see that the idea is exactly the same. And again, this is just one reason that a grid is so good and it just makes your entire workflow a lot faster by doing it this way now obviously if you wanted more rows you can do that as well so if we go back here if we click on the grid again you if you let's say you wanted to do, have sort of you know another row underneath you could actually you don't even need to do anything to the grid if you just click on the div block itself and then do your keyboard shortcuts again of uh, copy and paste you can then do that and it will automatically populate the rows underneath as well. So you don't have to keep adding columns on the right hand side every time. All you might need to do, if, if you click on the grid again, because we have 50 pixels worth of padding here, I think it was. Yeah, that's 50. Let's pop it back. And also, if you do what I just did there where you couldn't quite get it right, you can just manually enter in the actual uh, size as well. So what we want to do is just drag this down again. So we have 50 on the sides and 50 on the bottom, so it's all even. And there we go. We now have two rows and three columns each side. Okay, so hopefully if you're if you're new to Webflow, this um, kind of demystifies how you'd actually use it. I'll do just one more thing as well. So if we look at this sort of section here where we have, again, again this is super common on all sorts of websites where you have text on one side and then a big image on the, on the other side. We'll do the same kind of thing. So back to our grid. We'll just delete, uh, yeah, we'll delete this row. For, no, sorry, we'll delete the content actually. So if we just get rid of those and we'll delete one more. So that's fine. And then all we need now, we don't need to have uh, three columns. We need just one, sorry, just two. So if you get one, get rid of one over here, what we'll do now is we'll actually just, um, yeah, we'll just get rid of the content that's in here and then we'll throw in our image. So I've just used, again, another image from Webflow. And there we are. And if we get rid of that one over here. Okay, and then the text was flexible CMS. So we'll just type that in. Oops. Okay, I think what we'll do, we'll just use, again, the paragraph again from here. And we'll just keep on the dummy text that it has just to, just to show you. So you can see here, I won't do all this. But again, you get the idea. So having an image on the right text on the left hand side and that obviously is is super common on pretty much all sorts of websites and the exact same thing would apply here too so as we go down we need to do the same kind of thing because i've already done this on the previous one it's already done it for me but again you get the idea pretty much anything where you have sort of columns and rows a uh, grid is a super super useful thing for this and again i would recommend using it for pretty much anything when it comes to structure in terms of columns and rows okay hope you found that useful and i will see you on the next one